Hello, hello, everyone. Riem, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to another um, day of NABH Live workshops. Today, I'm very excited to have with me Lauren Dutton. Um, I hope I pronounced her name correctly. Uh, who will be going through with us uh, and work a workshop on Infura, specifically about um, what is Infura and how does Metamask use it. So for those of you who are working on the Infura bounty, um, this is a workshop that would definitely be useful for all of you. Um, and also for those who are working on the Make a Dab That Slaps bounty and you are planning to use Infura, this should also be a workshop that uh, you keep your eyes on and pay attention. So I have also another announcement for this workshop. Uh, so stay to the end for a chance to receive an exclusive surprise delivered right to your mailbox. So for those who want to receive this surprise, make sure to stay all the way to the end of today's workshop and you might just get the surprise from us. Okay, so without further ado, let me have Lauren Dutton up on stage. All right, and you can take it away. Awesome, can everyone here and see me okay? All right, let me just get my screen shared. All right, so today I'm going to be talking about what is Infura and how does MetaMask use it. Uh, I'm going to keep this short and sweet, basically just a high-level overview of what do we offer and how does MetaMask actually leverage it. So again, I'm Lauren Dutton. I'm a developer advocate at Consensus, and let's get started. So on today's agenda is going to be what is Infura and why do we need it? How does MetaMask use it? And how does MetaMask actually optimize it? So first of all, what is Infura? Well, the world's most powerful suite of highly available blockchain APIs and developer tools. But what does this actually mean? So our first developer offering is our RPC endpoints. Uh, basically, we have API keys that offer you 10 different networks that you can connect. So let's take a look at the Infura dashboard and see what this looks like. So we'll click dashboard. When you get in here, just click create a new API key and you'll want to do Web3 API for your normal thing. So we'll call it test and click create. Awesome. So then you'll click endpoints and here you see your API key and then each API ends with this key. So you'll copy and paste this directly into your code and we can take a look at what that looks like. It'll live in your .env, and these are just test variables, so don't worry about it. But um, yeah, so you'll name them whatever you want and bring them into whichever file you create the auth object, and then create your ID, your secret ID, your private key, and then whichever chain uh, you're deploying to, Lauren, you'll find that ID. That's Lauren, all. sorry. Mm -hmm. um, participants are requesting for you to speak a little slower. I think it's a bit hard for them so, to catch. Yeah. Yeah. So sorry, guys. I'll slow down a bit. So this is the auth object, and it can live in whichever file you choose to authenticate it. Um, you will keep the variables in the .env so that it, nothing public is deployed to GitHub or otherwise, because you want to keep your secret keys secret. Um, mine are just for testing, though. So I was saying the chain ID is going to determine whichever chain you're deploying to, and all of these will be listed in our documentation. So this is just a high-level overview of how each, uh, each key is implemented into the actual project itself. So we will go back to the slides. So our next developer offering is IPFS. Interplanetary file storage is just a way of decentralized data. What Infura has for that is an API that allows you to pin your content. We have a dedicated gateway, which basically is your own custom subdomain where your content can live. And then within the Infura dashboard, we have an explorer. So you can interact with all of the content that you have pinned right there. Um, and we can go back and take a look at what this looks like. So this time, instead of Web3 API, we'll click IPFS. What am I going to this to? So here you can see your API, uh, API endpoint for IPFS specifically, secret and your normal key. And then if you want to get into those dedicated gateways, you'll just enable that there and name it whatever you want. So we'll call mine Lauren and save subdomain. So all of my content will live at lauren.infuraipfs.io. All that will be there. All right. So why do we even need node providers? 
Well, using your own node, it is possible. Or alternatively, you could use your own node and have a backup like Infura or another node service provider. But running your own node is computationally very expensive and requires a lot of developer hours. So Infura has a 99.9% .9 uptime, which means it's taking a lot of the stress of handling that off of your plate. So, you know, it's possible to go many different routes with this, but um, having, having Infura can be hugely beneficial to the process. So Infura is the only RPC that is trusted by the leading Web3 wallet. Yes, MetaMask relies on Infura, but how? So for the initial connection, MetaMask actually uses Infura to make that connection to the gateway. It's working on the back end to connect you to Ethereum or whichever network you choose, including the test nets, also for transaction broadcasting. So whenever you initiate a tra transaction, you're maybe sending Ether or you're interacting with a dApp. Infura is right there on the back end, acting as the intermediary, speaking to the network on your behalf. Uh, also, it's great for data retrieval. So whenever you're calling for information from any blockchain, Infura is going behind the scenes and grabbing that for you and then providing it at source in your wallet. And then lastly, accessibility to the network. So our infrastructure ensures that no matter what network congestion, location you're in, anything that's going on, you are always connected. So let's learn from the pros. How does MetaMask optimize Infura? Well, why would we need to optimize? So firstly, to improve performance and to enhance the user experience, yes, but to also reduce costs, which is arguably the most important factor for enterprise resiliency and scaling. There are five primary types of optimizations that MetaMask enables, and the first one is batching. So batching is basically saying, hey, let's do a bunch of these calls all at the same time instead of doing them one by one so that you know everything just moves smoother and more efficiently and we don't have to spend the gas fees and each transaction effort going step by step. Also indexing and caching. So indexing is saying, if we keep it in a temporary storage, then the computer will already remember the call for when it needs it later and it won't have to go do it from scratch every single time. Uh, event subscriptions, this is where WebSockets comes into play and it's listening for specific events instead of consistently polling. And this is also very, very useful. Um, we have a series of miscellaneous optimizations that we use, and then some optimizations specific to us being an enterprise, like having multiple project IDs or implementing fallback providers. So that is it. I would like to open up the floor for some questions and answer time. Um, yeah, happy to hear it. And if you guys would like to get a hold of me, I'm at Lauren MXV on Twitter and Telegram. And I am in the Infura Bounty channel on Discord. So I'm happy to answer any questions there as well. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. I want to present uh, the workshop. Um, so we'll use this moment to uh, answer any questions that you guys may have. So. For those of you who have any questions, you uh, just pop it on the chat below and we'll take the questions from there. But for now, uh, we do have two questions for Lauren. So the first one is, does Polygon offer web sockets? So Polygon web sockets is new and you can find that in your dashboard. Uh, I encourage everyone to go try that out. It's a really exciting feature that we've been working hard on, yeah. All right. And the second question is, how does Infura Fawcett work? Yeah, uh, the Infura faucet is also relatively new. So we have uh, two different features for that. We can do either Linea or for Sepolia. Each way you get 0 .5, 0 0.5, and uh, you'll just type in your wallet address and you'll see that in your wallet. Great. And yeah, so let me just give the time. It gives everyone a little more time in case they have any questions. Okay, no questions. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so uh, that's the end of today's workshop. But um, if you are afraid to put your questions in the chat uh, wow. and would like to consult or ask Lauren um, directly, or privately in this space, uh, feel free to catch her um, once she steps off this stage uh, in a little bit and you can consult her privately. But otherwise, um, that's the workshop for today. And for those of you who have questions after this um, workshop 
feel free to ping us on Discord uh, in the Infura help desk. So thank you, everyone. Yep, that's it for today.